Hi, I'm Adam Meyer of Mill City Luther in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And in this video, I'm going to go over my method of fixing a broken peg head on a guitar. This uh, Stanley Vienna Gibson ES335. Here's this side of uh, the crack. You can see it'll close by hand pretty well. You don't really have any missing pieces. This spot here, I think that's just disrupted finish. Got a little, on the side here, it's a little jagged. This side, it's rather clean. And, uh, can't quite show it on the phone here, but there's a little extra crack here as well. Comes up to the peghead faceplate. There's another one right there. See if you can spot it here. So it's black on black. I'm trying to get the light right here. But the crack comes all the way through here. So this is open. When I put glue in, glue will want to come through here. So you have to be aware of that. What I'll do is I'll, I'll wax up the, uh, the truss rod threads. And also put some tape around it and stuff. But um, that's a reason why you clamp it up once it's had glue in it, but then you got to take it apart and go inside and make sure you clean out the, the pocket here for the truss rod. This is what I'm going to be using for glue. I use a, a two-part epoxy. Uh, it's in industrial strength. This hardens up much harder than the wood. Uh, it is, uh, as long as you're careful mixing it, this comes out with a great result, it is very strong. Um, you have to mix by volume. Uh, don't mix a batch that's too small because it's too easy to commit uh, an error in, uh, in, in your mixing. You have a little too much or not enough of one of the components. So uh, I've got my mixing cup here. Uh, I'll be mixing in that, of course, stir stick. Need a lot of paper towels to be cleaning up after myself. And Another reason why I use epoxy is because if when you put it in the crack, you use a hair dryer, it will uh, become more viscous, uh, more water-like, and it'll actually seep down into the crack further. So um, it's a you know a bit of an insurance that you're actually getting the glue all the way down deep where you need to get it. I just use a nice little uh, old hair dryer. Um, it's kind of a smaller size, so I'm not blowing it, uh, it hot air everywhere.
Okay, and that's what there is to it. Um, didn't have uh, the best lighting to be showing the spraying of the clear coat and everything, but you get the idea. There's there's plenty of videos of people doing touch-up spraying on guitars. Uh, I, it took me, I think, three coats of the tobacco brown to match the color uh, and to get the, the repair covered here so that you couldn't see it. Um, obviously, with a crack or anything you're trying to hide, you have to put the color on thick enough that it's opaque, that you can't see through it. Um, if this was, let's say, a Heritage Cherry, uh, I can do the same thing, but you're going to end up with this area being solid red, where you can't see through it. It would be a matching color red, but unlike having your tobacco burst where you have this fade that matches the rest of the guitar, it would just be solid red through here. You wouldn't notice it. You're not going to see the splints. But that's just that situation. That's what you have to do. If the guitar is completely natural finish, if you had, let's say, a Martin D28, where there is no toner, no color, nothing sprayed on, it's just natural wood, then the touch-up, there just really isn't any point to it. Um, you would uh, see the splints. If the customer, you know, you really didn't like seeing that, just keep, spray a brown that's very similar to the color of the mahogany neck, and that's what you have. It, that's really, you can't hide it. You're going to know that a repair was done. But on an instance like this, you're kind of fortunate that there is a, a burst to mimic and uh, to kind of help hide what was done here. Now, it, it is possible. I, I nor wouldn't do it this way, but some people will spray the entire back of the peg head just to kind of blend everything in. The issue with that is you should really strip the entire back of the peg head and get the serial number cleaned out. Uh, I've seen it way too many times where people do this, they end up spraying over it and filling in the serial number. You know, it, it, it's whether the guitar is collectible or not, but you need the serial number to trace it if you ever have a theft or if you want to sell it to someone or even if you want to date it. It's just kind of unprofessional to just spray over, fill it in, and just move on. You, you need to clean all that out. That's a lot more labor. So if you did want something done like that, where this whole thing was tobacco brown on the back, I can do that, but it's going to cost a lot more. This customer just opted for, for doing the fade across the, the collar of the neck. Um, now, also, there's a, in the, the video, make sure to tape off the binding if there is binding. You're not going to do this this burst across and you end up having binding there so you got to remember to tape that off so you have that you can see there and the the whole idea is that it's supposed to look original uh given nitrocellulose lacquer enough time it will seep down into the pores as it gasses off over time you may end up with a little bit of a witness line of where the crack and the splints are that doesn't mean it's coming apart. That's just how nitrocellulose lacquer ages over time. That's that's what it is. So that's uh, the situation with this guitar. If uh, you have an instrument, you live in the area and you want service done like this, just use my contact information at the end of the video. And uh, that's the end of this one. And see you in the next video.